Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless acts 4 10 through 12 let it be known to you all and to all the people of israel that by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom you crucified whom god raised from the dead by him this man stands here before you whole this is the stone which was rejected by you builders which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Kamala Harris's mask is falling off. Yes, the presidential nominee has been caught out yet again, this time desperately trying to win over Christian voters by any means necessary. Kamala Harris attended a New Birth Missionary Baptist Church service in Georgia on Sunday morning. These words are simple. We know them well. It is an essential tenet and a pillar of our faith and that of so many others. However, one must ask, are all people of faith living those words? Are all people of faith expressing those words in their actions? Do we have leaders in place who understand that in the face of a stranger, one should see a neighbor? And I'll tell you, I grew up in a church that took those words to heart. As a little girl on Sundays, my sister Maya and I would go to 23rd Avenue Church of God in Oakland, California where we sang in the children's choir, we attended Sunday school, and where after church we would go to the basement and eat a food prepared by loving hands. And where I first learned the teachings of the Bible and my earliest memories of those teachings are about a loving God, a loving God. A God who asks us to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. We're not gonna be gaslighted on this. We remember Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. And I know we all agree, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do. And it is my pledge to you that when Congress passes a bill to restore reproductive freedom nationwide, as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. A God who asks us to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. The horror of abortion is precisely an attack on the least of these. The unborn baby is weak and defenseless and are the most vulnerable members of the human family. It's in the 25th chapter of Matthew that Christ foretells how he will come again in glory to judge all the nations and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left. Christ says to those who are on his right, who feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and go to the prisoner, that as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me, ushering them in to eternal life. Those who are on the left, who are unsympathetic to the least of these, are instead told, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not enough to believe that Jesus is who he says he is if our actions don't match our words. Jesus proclaims this in Matthew 7, 
21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And to add insult to injury, Christian anti-abortion activists were also forcibly removed from the Baptist church service by police during Kamala Harris's appearance. <laughs> And then it happened to J.D. Vance. Some some students or people in the audience yelled, "Jesus is king!" Did you king. tape both of those? I have them both, and I put them together right. with my edit machine in my office. You're good. Here we go. We remember Donald Trump hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court. What? with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. No, I think you meant to go to the smaller one down the street. There is something really bizarre with Kamala Harris's anti-Christian rhetoric and anti-Christian approach to public policy. I don't think we've, I, I don't think that we've, that's right, Jesus is king, and I don't think that we've seen. Kamala Harris and her running mate, Tim Walls, both claim to be Christians. The problem with that claim is they hate the things God loves and they love the things God hates. To run a presidential campaign on abortion shows us where America stands as a nation concerning the ways of God. We can rest assured God will judge America for murdering unborn babies in the womb. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ, and so I say as we move forward, let us look at where we are and understand the lesson of the Gospel of Luke. Because right now each of us has an opportunity to make a difference. In this moment, our country is at a crossroads. And where we go from here is up to us, as Americans and as people of faith. And now we ask a question, we face this question, what kind of country do we want to live in? A country of chaos, fear, and hate, or a country of freedom, compassion, and justice? And let us recognize that when we shine the light in moments of darkness, it will guide our feet into the path of peace. And let us remember that while weeping may endure for a night, Joy cometh in the morning. Thank you. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you all very much. First Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Matthew 24.11 Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. False prophet is the Greek word pseudoprophetes, which means a pretended foreteller or religious imposter. A false prophet is a person who spreads false teachings or messages while claiming to speak the word of God. Rather than speak the word of the Lord, false prophets deliver messages that originate in their own hearts as we read in Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. In the New Testament, Jesus warns his followers about false prophets as we read in Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. 
Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Scripture teaches believers to be diligent in faith and devotion to Christ's teachings so that they will be able to spot false prophets and false teachers quickly. 1 John 4, 1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. What does it mean to test the spirits? The reason for the admonition to test the spirits, or test all things, is that there are many false prophets, or wolves in sheep's clothing, that try to lead Christians astray. Sadly, there are many people who claim to speak for God, who are presenting a false gospel that is powerless to save. Such errant teaching leaves people with a false hope of salvation. 2 Corinthians 11:13 through 15 warns us, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. The reason for testing the spirits is to see if it is truly from God, or if it is a lie from Satan and his servants. The test is to compare what is being taught with the clear teaching of the Bible. The Bible alone is the Word of God. It alone is inspired and inerrant. Therefore, the way to test the spirits is to see if what is being taught is in line with the clear teaching of Scripture. In Acts 17, 10, and 11, the Berean Jews were commended because after they heard the teachings of Paul and Silas, they examined the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. The Bereans were called noble for doing so. Testing the spirits means that one must know how to examine the scriptures. Rather than accept every teaching, discerning Christians diligently study the scriptures. Then they know what the Bible says and therefore can test all things and hold fast to what is true. In order to do this, a Christian must be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God is to be a lamp and a light to our path. We must let its light shine on the teachings and doctrines of the day. The Bible alone is the standard by which all truth must be judged. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Genesis 12, 1-3 Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's foreign policy is pretty simple. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. A former United States ambassador to Israel is accusing the U.S. of spying on the Jewish state. David Friedman says the Biden administration leaked information to the enemies of Israel and the United States. U.S. intelligence documents appeared online over the weekend. They included analysis of Israel's preparations for an attack on Iran. CBN's Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. The White House is investigating how intelligence documents analyzing Israel's plans appeared on the Telegram messaging app Middle East Spectator, trying to determine whether the information was leaked or hacked. We're deeply concerned, and the president remains deeply concerned, uh, about any leakage of classified information into the public domain. That is not supposed to happen, and it's unacceptable when it does. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman charged the administration with undermining Israel. Let's just understand what happened here. The Biden-Harris administration spied on Israel and leaked the results to the enemies of Israel and the USA. Today, the great nation of Israel shows the world how a nation needs to act. 
when it's facing a danger to its existence and looking the face of danger in the eye with peace of mind and knowing what must be done and what can be done and to be willing to enter the fray. Israeli leaders point to progress on both the northern and southern fronts. Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant visited soldiers fighting Hezbollah along the Israeli-Lebanese border and told them Hezbollah is collapsing. The IDF says it's killed some 2,000 Hezbollah terrorists and wiped out 70 percent of their rockets. The IDF recently declassified intelligence about deceased Hassan Nasrallah's bunker. Israel did not attack the target because it's under a hospital in Beirut. IDF spokesman Daniel Hagari says there's still hundreds of millions of dollars in cash and gold inside. Directly under El Sahel Hospital, in the heart of Beirut, there are hundreds of millions of dollars in cash and gold inside the bunker right now. I'm calling on the Lebanese government, Lebanese authorities, and the international organizations don't, don't allow Hezbollah to use the money for terror and to attack Israel. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Concerns are growing in South Korea after new signs North Korean troops are training to fight for Russia in Ukraine. A senior government official in South Korea tells ABC News Seoul was considering sending defensive weapons and a monitoring team to assess the threat posed by North Korea. A North Korean UN representative is denying that troops were sent to Russia to fight Ukraine. But South Korea says Pyongyang sent a large scale deployment on Friday to help its allies. So so which is it? What are you hearing there on the ground? All signs are pointing to North Korean involvement in Russia's war in Ukraine. We know this is creating a lot of anxiety, a lot of anger among South Koreans too. They are now sending, uh, considering sending weapons uh, to, uh, to, to Ukraine for the first time. Since up until now, it's only only being defensive. They are also uh, going to send a monitoring team to look at troop movement. We know that in June, uh, Russia and North Korea signed a mutual uh, security pact that included a provision that basically guaranteed that they would come to each other's aid in case of any emergency. And that's what's causing so much concern, uh, not only in this region, uh, but also, uh, of course, in Ukraine, where they're seeing some, uh, some defeats in the battlefield, especially in East in Ukraine. Luke 21 25 and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring one of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation this is exactly what is happening in our world today Mozambique police fired tear gas at protesters in the capital Maputo on Monday Hundreds gathered at the scene where two opposition party figures were shot dead after a disputed election. The people chose Venancio Mondlane, but what's happening is that the party in power does not want to give the power to Venancio. And that is why the people are in the streets protesting like me. I voted Venancio Mondlane, and that's why I'm here, to re-vindicate my rights. Early on Saturday, gunmen killed an opposition lawyer and a party official in their car in Maputo raising tensions ahead of a planned national strike. Independent presidential candidate Venancio Mondlane, who organized the strike, told protesters to go home after the clashes with police. In the past, Mozambican police have used live ammunition at political protests. The full results of Mozambique's October 9 national election are expected this week. Early results show that the ruling party, for Limo, is set for another win. But opposition candidates say the poll was rigged. Frelimo has ruled a southern African country since 1975. 
It has been accused of electoral fraud by opposition leaders, civil society and election observers, which it denies. U.S.-based observers said the poll did not meet international standards for democratic elections. Mozambique's Electoral Commission has declined to comment on accusations of fraud. Tonight, a trail of mud and destruction in Roswell, New Mexico, after the city received more than a third of its annual rainfall in just a few hours. Y'all, this is insane. Two people declared dead with dozens taken to hospitals. The National Guard joining state police and local agencies to rescue more than 300 from the rushing waters. Danny Ford says he woke up to water inside his home. I mean, the water was flowing, uh, it was flowing north, kind of northeast, like, like like a river. I mean, even... All of this? Yeah, so I mean, I couldn't even get to my truck because of how, how strong it was coming up the road. So it was just at that point, we were just panic mode, trying to get water out the house. And... Some of his neighbors, like Mike Lanford, were left with no option other than risking their lives to get out. By the time we got to the front door, and I'm serious, this took like in less than 15 minutes, the water was up here to the porch, and we were literally swimming through this. Our dogs were swimming, couldn't touch the ground, and the all the current wanted to do was wash us away. Landford later joining others to help rescue neighbors stuck in their cars. I am sitting on the roof of my cop car. Even the county sheriff having to climb on top of his vehicle as a wall of water came rushing through town. That is the side of my truck. With the water receding, the governor now declaring a state of emergency to mobilize resources and emergency funds. In the aftermath, climate experts taking notice as the storm broke a 24-hour rainfall record that stood for more than a century. And with the water receding, the cleanup effort is already underway. But for people in areas that flooded like this one, they're going to be returning to homes with inches of rain inside and others with structures that collapse like this one. Also, multiple vehicles have been swept by that water against trees, walls, or each other like the ones behind me. It is going to be an extensive cleanup here. We have reached the stage where there is literally no pause between major weather disasters hitting the world. It is just one disaster after another. When times were normal, there would be a major disaster every once in a while. But now we have reached the stage where there's literally no pause between them. Sadly, this is how it's going to be now. It's just going to be one disaster after another. And most people will have absolutely no idea why any of this is happening. We are living in very troubled times and people need hope. We read about that hope in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We also read about those who do not believe in Jesus are condemned and love darkness rather than light in John 3.18-20. He who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to call upon the name of Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. 
This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Overnight, homecoming week ending tragically at Albany State University. Take a look at this new video from ASU's East Campus. Officials there say one person is dead after six people were shot. Police say shots were fired somewhere near the student union. Investigators are still searching for a suspect this morning. And in Fort Wayne, police say that one person is now dead and 10 others are injured after gunfire erupted during a Halloween party for high school students last night. Police say they responded after multiple 911 calls came in reporting gunshots and seeing people running in all directions from the home on northeast side of Fort Wayne. One neighbor says he heard several gunshots and then screaming outside of his home. It's just an awful sound and I said I can't sit in here. You know, there's I got to go outside because they're screaming for help out there. We begin in Holmes County where the Sheriff's Department is currently investigating a deadly shooting that took place at a gathering that left three people dead and multiple others injured. Holmes County Sheriff Willie March says all was well before an argument began amongst some men. Then multiple shots were fired. I'm a wreck right now and I feel I can't even express myself. This is this is wow. This is this is uh, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, that somebody would do that, just come out and just start shooting innocent people. 911 calls started coming in around 5 a.m. yesterday. I can tell you a family of seven lived at that home. Five people are confirmed dead, two adults, three children. We know somebody in the home hid in the bathroom to call 911. And we know a teen girl was shot twice, but was able to get out of the house and get help. Now, when deputies arrived on scene, they say they immediately took a teen boy into custody. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. As Christ followers, what are we to do as we see the world growing darker? We are to walk in love, light, and wisdom as we read in Ephesians 5, 1 through 21. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Brothers and sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.